Laser blast seared past Commander Keith Burns' starfighter as he single-handedly engaged the entire 800,000-strong Una's battle fleet, knowing full well his death would mean the extinction of humankind. Burns rolled his fighter, the SF-101 Wraith, narrowly evading a barrage of missiles that detonated behind him. The vacuum of space lit up with thousands of explosions as the Una's ships furiously unleashed everything they had at the lone human pilot. Just minutes ago, Burns had been briefed by Admiral Holloway aboard the USS Retribution about the Una's surprise attack on the human colony World Arcadia Prime. Over five million colonists were sitting ducks. With no other defenders close enough to help, Burns was the only thing standing between the civilians and a ruthless alien conqueror that had already subjugated a dozen races. Failure here would be catastrophic for the human race. If Arcadia Prime fell the Unas would gain a key foothold in human space. From there, they could cut off supply lines, harass trade routes, and isolate other human worlds for conquest. But Burns had a reputation as the best pilot in the galaxy. The grizzled veteran had fought in dozens of campaigns against the Unas, Kralath, Zorgons, and more. Tales of his skills were whispered fearfully among the alien races. Some even believed he was an immortal super-soldier, unkillable after so many battles. Now rocketing towards the massive Una's fleet, Burns gripped the control stick tightly. His flight suit strained against his tensed muscles. The retribution had detected the Una's ships were equipped with a new weapon that could disable human shields and weapons. But Burns' wraith had been outfitted with an experimental device to render him immune. It was untested in battle, though. After a quick pre-flight check on the arsenal of advanced weaponry loaded into the wraith, Burns had blasted out of the hangar, inertial dampeners pushed to their limits. His radar now lit up with hundreds of thousands of enemy contacts moving into attack formation over the defenseless colony. Attention Una's fleet. This is Commander Keith Burns of the Terran Space Force, he broadcast over comms. I'm ordering you to withdraw immediately or be destroyed. Harsh alien laughter crackled over the channel. Commander Burns, I've heard legends about you hissed the Una's leader, Warmaster Yaris. I will take great pleasure in skinning you alive and broadcasting your screams to your pathetic species before we glass your colony. You're welcome to try, Burns growled, not flinching at the gruesome threat. He killed the comm and firewalled his thrusters, accelerating towards the wall of alien ships, weapons primed. Burns knew his chances of survival against these odds were practically zero. But if he could just buy enough time for the colonists to evacuate, their sacrifice wouldn't be in vain. Every human life saved here would mean hope remained for his species, and this lone starfighter pilot would gladly give his to ensure that... Plasma torpedoes and rail cannon rounds filled Burns' view as he pushed his wraith's engines to their limits. He jerked the control stick, sending his starfighter into a dizzying roll. His point defense lasers flared to life, spitting streams of superheated light at incoming ordnance. Explosions bloomed around him as the lasers intercepted the worst of the barrage. Burns pulled back on the stick, lining up the lead Una's dreadnought in his sights. His finger hovered over the missile launch trigger for a split second before slamming down. A full volley of Devastator missiles leapt from his wraith's launch bays, the human-made warheads burning through space on pillars of fire. Burns watched the missiles close on the dreadnought, counting down the meters. But instead of impacting on the ship's hull, the missiles slammed into a shimmering energy barrier and detonated impotently. Shit, Burns hissed through gritted teeth. The Unas had some kind of advanced shielding, the likes of which he'd never seen. He'd need to try something else. Wrenching his flight stick to the side, Burns sent his wraith into a stomach-churning loop, he came up on the dreadnought's underside and squeezed the trigger for his fighter's heavy plasma cannons. Brilliant blue bolts erupted from the barrels, slamming into the dreadnought's shields. But the alien defenses held firm, absorbing the shots without so much as a flicker. Burns' eyes flicked to his radar display as it lit up with new contacts. A squadron of Una's fighters had broken away from the main fleet and were rocketing towards him. Plasma cannons charged. Yaris's mocking laughter filled the cockpit. I was expecting more from the great Keith Burns. I'll hang your charred skeleton in my trophy room. 
Burns snarled. A feral sound. He turned to face the incoming fighters, his fingers flying over the controls to arm his wraith's experimental weapon. A tightly focused beam of gravitonic energy lanced out from his fighter, the concentrated gravity wave slicing through the Una's shields like they weren't even there. Three fighters burst apart as the beam bisected them, the edges of the cuts glowing molten. The remaining fighters scattered, their tight formation disintegrating. Burns felt a surge of grim satisfaction. The prototype worked, but he had no time to celebrate. He was still one ship against an entire alien armada. He needed to fight smart, not just hard. Burns slammed his thrusters to full power, the inertial dampeners straining to compensate as he rocketed towards the perimeter of the Una's fleet. Enemy fire crisscrossed around him in a deadly web, but Burns wove through the storm of plasma and superheated metal, his fighter never flying the same direction for more than a second. His hands danced over the controls, executing turns and rolls that would crush an ordinary human. As he reached the enemy lines, Burns noted with satisfaction that the Una's ships were breaking formation to engage him. They moved to intercept, falling right into his trap. With a fierce grin stretching his face, Burns diverted all power to engines and forward shields. His wraith shot forward like a bullet, straight towards the heart of the alien fleet. And cut through it he would. Plasma charges and cannon slugs rained down all around his wraith as Burns corkscrewed and juked through the Una's barrage. His hands flew over the control stick, wrenching his ship through maneuvers that would crush an unaugmented human pilot. A trio of cruisers moved to block his path, their weapons glowing ominously as they prepared to unleash a volley that would vaporize his wraith. Burns gritted his teeth and counted down, watching the cruisers intently. At the last possible second he killed his main engines and fired his ventral thrusters, flipping the wraith end over end. Before the aliens could react, he slammed his throttle forward, narrowly boosting backwards away from the blistering storm of fire that blazed through where his ship had been a heartbeat before. The cruisers, caught off guard by Burns's impossibly precise maneuver, were unable to adjust their vectors in time. They ploughed forward at full burn, slamming into the unshielded hulls of a dozen other Una's ships with thunderous force. Blinding explosions lit the void as the stricken vessels crumpled and tore, belching flame and molten debris. Burns deftly weaved through the expanding field of destruction, using the momentary chaos to mask his fighter's signature. But his respite was short-lived. As he reached the far side of the debris, his threat receiver shrieked a warning. A swarm of Una's fighters had appeared as if from nowhere, their cannons already spitting fire. Burns reflexively boosted and rolled, feeling his wraith shudder as the first plasma bolt sizzled past, barely missing. Instantly he slammed his feet down on the top rudder pedals while cutting power to his ventral thrusters and maxing out the dorsal ones. His ship spun 180 degrees in place, now racing backwards away from the enemy fighters, giving him a clear shot. Burns' fingers flew to the missile launch controls, rapidly programming a firing solution. He grinned savagely and squeezed the trigger, sending a full volley of seeker missiles leaping from their launch tubes with a kick he felt through the ship. The missiles streaked towards the Una's fighters at incredible velocity, their onboard cogitators instantly locking onto the drive signatures of their prey. The alien ships desperately tried to evade, launching flares and chaff to confuse the Seekers. But it was futile. Burns' munitions were the most advanced the Terran Space Force had to offer. The missiles wove unerringly through the countermeasures and zeroed in on their targets. A dozen Una's fighters vanished in roiling fireballs as the Seekers detonated, turning the ships into clouds of molten fragments and flash-vaporized alloy. Burns had no time to celebrate the small victory. With the fighter screen decimated, his path to the heart of the Una's fleet lay open. He firewalled his thrusters and rocketed forward, now more determined than ever to find some weakness in the alien's defenses that he could exploit. As he cut through the maelstrom of weapons fire and jinking ships, Burns divided his attention between flying and studying the sensor data from the enemy vessels. There had to be some vulnerability, some chink in their armor. He refused to believe this fight was unwinnable. And then he saw it, a slight fluctuation in the energy signatures of the Una's shields, 
so subtle and short-lived, most sensor packages would have filtered it out as background noise. But Burns' wraith was outfitted with the best technology humanity had to offer. He watched intently, his augmented mind processing the data with lightning speed. There it was again. Every thirty seconds, the shield power levels of every ship in the Una's fleet dipped by 0.5% for a fraction of a second before stabilizing. It was almost imperceptible, but it was there. A feral grin spread slowly across Burns's face as the realization hit him. The Unas were slaving their shields to a central control system, likely aboard the flagship, which meant if he could get close enough to Warmaster Yaris's dreadnought, he might be able to overload the system and bring the alien defenses crashing down. It was a desperate gambit, but what choice did he have? The survival of millions depended on him. But to reach the flagship, Burns would have to cut through the most heavily defended part of the Una's formation. He would be flying into the jaws of the beast. The enemy would throw everything they had at him. This would push his skills and his wraith to their absolute limits. Still grinning savagely, Burns accelerated to attack speed and adjusted his vector, aiming his fighter at the heart of the alien swarm. Burns's wraith danced through the chaotic lattice of Una's warships like silver lightning, his reflexes and instincts stretched to their absolute limits. His hands flew over the control stick and throttle, translating minute muscle twitches into impossibly precise adjustments in thrust and vector. The void of space around him seethed with a hellstorm of lethal energy and metal as the aliens unleashed the full fury of their weapons, thousands of beams and projectiles weaving a tapestry of death that would have been the end of any other pilot. He pushed his augmented mind and body far beyond human limits, perceiving and reacting to the maelstrom of incoming fire with preternatural speed and skill. The wraith bobbed, weaved, and spun through the infinitesimal gaps in the onslaught, its quantum carbon hull barely kissed by the fury raging around it. To the Unas, it must have seemed as if Burns's ship was in a dozen places at once, teleporting through their fire with impossible speed. Suddenly proximity alarms shrieked as a trio of massive Una's battleships flanked Burns on both sides, their flanks erupting with a bristling hedge of plasma cannons and railguns. Time seemed to slow as the turrets rotated to track him, the alien gunners triangulating his position with merciless precision. The battleship's weapons fired in perfect synchronicity, filling the space around Burns with a web of crisscrossing energy beams and hypersonic metal slugs. It was a killing box, a trap with no escape. Any ordinary pilot would have been flash-vaporized in a heartbeat. Burns only grinned fiercer. His ice-blue eyes flickered as he absorbed the battleship's firing solutions, quantum computers in his brain calculating intercept vectors and his chances of survival. The odds flickered in his augmented vision. But it was enough. It had to be. With liquid grace, Burns killed his main engines and fired his dorsal and ventral thrusters at maximum power. The wraith spun like a rifle bullet, corkscrewing through the maelstrom as the incoming fire slashed past, near enough to scorch the hull. G-forces that would tear an ordinary human apart slammed Burns into his crash couch with the weight of a mountain. The wraith shot through the net of death, a silver axe head parting a sea of fire, as the spin brought the battleship's unprotected engine cones into view, Burns poured power to his engines and boosted forward, peppering the massive vessels with plasma bolts. Searing blue-white energy splashed and spat against the Una's shields, not even making them flicker. Burns' eyes darted to his sensor readouts, watching the timer count down to the fleet-wide shield fluctuation with merciless precision. He pushed his engines and afterburners far into the red zone, rocketing towards the nearest battleship on a direct collision course. Sweat dripped into his eyes inside his helmet as the range dropped and the alien ship swelled to fill his canopy. 300 meters. The timer hit zero. In that instant, Burns saw the telltale flicker of the battleship's shields and fired his wraith secret weapon, the one even he had never dared to use. A quantum warhead a lance of pure antimatter leapt from his fighter's prow with the brilliance of a newborn star. It crossed the distance to the battleship in a heartbeat, piercing its weakened shields like a bullet through paper. The lance speared into the Una's ship, 
vaporizing layer after layer of armor in a fountain of molten alloy. Decks flashed into vapor as the uncontainable antimatter chewed deeper into the battleship's body, crew vanishing in puffs of plasma. In milliseconds, the lance reached the mighty vessel's reactor, and the battleship died. It exploded like a supernova, a miniature sun suddenly birthed into existence. The Una's ships flanking it vanished instantly, converted to their component atoms. Those further away crumpled and blackened as the heat of a dozen stars washed over them, their shields overloading in a cascade of detonations. Burns was already gone, riding the bow wave of the blast to safety, his wraith skating the tsunami of radiation and debris. As the maelstrom faded behind him, he checked his readouts and allowed a feral smile. The Una's fleet shields had dropped by ten percent, the battleship's destruction overloading their control systems. Hundreds of ships flickered with the scars of the blast. One down, seven to go. Burns' eyes locked onto the massive dreadnought as it loomed ahead, a gleaming leviathan of alien metal, bristling with enough firepower to annihilate a moon. He firewalled his thrusters, the inertial dampeners straining as he rocketed towards Yaris's flagship. Suddenly, proximity alarms shrieked. Burns's gaze snapped to his sensors as they showed a wall of energy erupting from the dreadnought, rapidly expanding to envelop the entire Una's fleet. The ship's shields flared brighter, reinforcing as they absorbed the additional power. Burns' hands clenched on the control stick. Yaris was overcharging his flagship's shields and projecting the energy to the rest of the armada. His quantum lances would never pierce that enhanced shielding now. Gritting his teeth, Burns wrenched his flight stick to the side, sending his wraith into a dizzying spiral as he wove through the Una's formations. He pushed his inertial compensators to their limits, his body crushed into the flight couch by G-forces that would pulverize an unaugmented human. Like angry hornets from a kicked nest, Una's ships broke from the main fleet to give chase, their weapons stabbing through space as they tried to bracket his wildly jinking fighter. Burns dipped and rolled, pouring all power to engines, luring his pursuers further from the protective bubble of the dreadnought's shields. A feral grin split his face. They'd taken the bait. Burns slammed his feet on the rudder pedals and cut his main engines. His wraith spun end for end in a heartbeat, his targeting reticle already filling with the unshielded rears of the Una's ships as their pilots struggled to compensate. His finger stabbed the trigger, unleashing a full salvo from his rail cannons and plasma batteries. Iridescent purple bolts and hypersonic metal slugs crossed the void in a blink, slamming into the stricken alien ships. Without their shields, the Una's vessels had no defense. Hulls crumpled and splintered like foil. Internal atmospheres flashed into brief fireballs as they vented into space. Glittering fragments spun lazily away as the pursuers disintegrated one after another. Burns boosted through the expanding field of debris, angling back towards Yaris's flagship. The path ahead was littered with the broken shells of alien ships, shattered by his guns. Enough of this. I will deal with you myself, Worm. The furious snarl of Warmaster Yaris crackled over Burns' comm, tightened with rage. He watched as the dreadnought's shields flickered and died, the immense energy diverted to reinforce the rest of the armada. Her hangar yawned open on the flagship's flank, like the maw of some great beast. From it emerged a single Una's fighter, larger and bristling with more vicious weapons than the others Burns had killed. Yaris's personal ship. Let us end this once and for all, the War Master hissed. I will take great pleasure in killing you myself. The alien leader's fighter lunged towards Burns's wraith, guns already blazing with searing red light. Burns snarled in kind and slammed his throttle to the stops. His engines howled as he burned to meet his foe head-on, locking eyes with the ugliness of Yaris's cruel face. The War Master wanted a duel, he'd get one. The two ships screamed towards each other, Weapons charged and eager for blood. Burns's eyes were chips of blue ice, his body welded to his flight seat. Yaris's fighter loomed in his canopy, alien guns swiveling hungrily. At the last possible instant before they collided, both ships wrenched wildly to the side, mere meters separating them as they passed. 
The wake of their engines buffeted each other like crashing tsunami waves. And then they were past, wheeling around to face each again as they boosted for distance. Burns' hands danced across his controls, rerouting power from shields to engines and weapons. There would be no hiding behind armor here, no fancy tricks or advanced technology. This was a test of skill, guts and aim. Just the way he liked it. You are nothing, human, Yaris spat over the comm, his voice thick with contempt. An insect beneath my boot. I will take pleasure in squashing you. Burns just smiled, a predator's smile. Shut up and fly, you son of a bitch. He firewalled his thrusters and rocketed back towards his foe, cannons hungry, heart pounding with the pure joy of battle. The Una's fighter filled his sights, alien and deadly, against the cold light of distant suns. One would fly away from this fight. One would die. It was time to see which was which. Engines roaring, Burns and Yaris hurtled towards each other. The noses of their fighters aimed head-on like lances. Burns's enhanced reflexes processed the rapidly closing distance in nanoseconds. Five hundred meters, four hundred, three hundred. At two hundred meters, both pilots simultaneously fire maneuvering thrusters and execute barrel rolls. Their ships flash past each other belly to belly, bare meters apart. As the fighters pass, Burns glimpses Yaris's alien visage through the Una's cockpit, the War Master's features contorted in pure, undiluted hatred. Clearing the merge, the two aces instantly snap their ships into a dizzying series of rolls, loops, and turns, each trying to get on the other's tail while avoiding the crisscrossing streams of cannon fire filling the void between them. Burns grits his teeth as he wrenches his flight stick to the stops, his wraith groaning under the strain of a crushing high G turn. The edges of his vision grey out from the brutal forces. Yaris matches the manoeuvre with uncanny skill, clinging to Burns' tail tenaciously. Plasma bolts and hypersonic slugs flash past Burns' canopy, some coming so close he can feel their heat through his fighter's hull. He rolls and jukes, trying to spoil Yaris's firing solution, but the Una's commander demonstrates skill far surpassing the other alien pilots Burns has killed. Suddenly Yaris cuts his fighter to the right. Burns seizes the momentary opportunity, flipping his dorsal thrusters on and boosting downward relative to the Una's ship to slide onto its six o'clock. Before Yaris can react, Burns triggers his wraith's guns, sending a full volley of plasma bolts straight into the enemy fighter's belly. The searing bolts splash against its shields, making the defensive barrier flare brilliantly, but failing to pierce it. Yaris's mocking laughter crackles across the comm channel. The War Master throws his ship into a twist and dives away, trying to break Burns' lock. But the human ace stubbornly maintains position, glued to the Una's fighter's tail, hammering it with cannon fire whenever his targeting reticle pulse is red. Yaris jukes and weaves with breathtaking skill, throwing his ship through a series of evasive maneuvers that would crush a human pilot. But Burns clings to him doggedly, matching every turn and roll, his wraith attached to the Una ship, as if by a tether. Clearly growing frustrated, Yaris abruptly kills his main engines and fires his dorsal thrusters. The alien ship drops like a stone relative to Burns' wraith. Before the human can react, Yaris has slid into position behind and above him, the Una's cannons shriek, stitching a line of plasma bolts towards Burns' cockpit. Burns instinctively slams his flight stick to the stops, sending his wraith into a gut-wrenching barrel roll. Searing plasma flashes past mere millimeters from his canopy, so close the bolts make his shield scream in protest as they strain to deflect the lethal heat. As Burns fights to reorient his ship and shake Yaris off his tail, a cold knot forms in his gut. With a stark clarity, he realizes the War Master has maneuvered their twisting, turning duel directly above the massive bulk of the Una's dreadnought. If Burns attempts to dive away now, he'll fly straight into the flagship's firing solution. Thinking fast, Burns kills his wraith's primary engines and fires his ventral thrusters. The sudden shift in momentum causes his fighter to drop like a stone relative to Yaris. The Una's pilot, not expecting the maneuver, overshoots Burns, passing directly above him. Burns immediately seizes the opportunity. 
he slams his throttle to the stops, pouring power to his engines. The wraith surges upwards, closing the distance to Yaris's ship in milliseconds. Before the Warmaster can react, Burns squeezes the trigger, unloading a full barrage from his rail cannons directly into the aft section of the Una's fighter. The hyper-accelerated rounds, each one a miniature kinetic kill vehicle, tear through Yaris's shields like they're made of tissue paper. They shred the engine housings, pulverizing delicate machinery and control systems. Instantly, the alien fighter begins trailing thick black smoke, shuddering and spinning out of control. It plummets towards the curved hull of Yaris's flagship far below, trailing fire. Over the comm channel, Burns hears the Una's leader roaring in incoherent fury, followed by the telltale hiss of atmosphere venting into the void. Yaris's stricken ship slams into the Dreadnought's armoured hide and explodes in a blinding fireball. The blast leaves a sizable crater in the warship's hull, molten metal dripping from the edges. For a moment, a strange silence falls over the battlefield. In that instant, Burns dares to hope that maybe, just maybe, it's over, that he's done the impossible and single-handedly taken out the Una's commander. But then his sensor board pings a new contact, and that hope shatters. Another Una's fighter, identical in every way to the one Yaris was just piloting, comes screaming out of the Dreadnought's hangar bay. It blasts towards Burns, weapons ports glowing with deadly light. Did you really think it would be that easy, human? Yaris's voice crackles over the comm, seething with incandescent rage. I have a dozen backup ships, each as powerful as the last. You cannot hope to defeat me. The Warmaster's fighter streaks towards Burns, cannons already blazing. Searing plasma bolts and hypersonic slugs stitch the void, forcing the human ace to throw his wraith into a dizzying series of evasive maneuvers. He pushes the inertial dampeners to their limits, wrenching his craft through turns and rolls that would reduce an unaugmented human to a smear of blood and pulped organs. But Yaris is relentless, matching Burns' move for desperate move. The Una's commander clings to the human's tail, slowly but inexorably wearing down his shields with a constant hammer of weapons fire. Proximity alarms shriek in Burns's ears as the shield indicators on his HUD dip closer and closer to the red, he knows he can't keep this up forever. Sooner or later, Yaris will get a lucky shot through, and it'll all be over. Glancing at his sensor readouts, Burns notices something odd. Every time Yaris fires his weapons, there's a minuscule dip in the Una's fighter's shield strength. It's barely perceptible, but it's there. In a flash of insight, Burns realizes what's happening. The Warmaster is so intent on killing him that he's overloading his own shields, diverting power to his cannons to pump out more fire. Yaris is slowly stripping his fighter of defences in his single-minded hunger to end Burns. A desperate plan forms in Burns' mind. It's a gambit that will likely get him killed, but if it works it might just end this fight once and for all. What's the matter, human? Yaris crows triumphantly over the comm. Finally ready to accept your fate. Burns takes a deep breath, his hands tightening on the control stick. He whispers a quick prayer to deities he's never really believed in. Then he slams his thumb down on the button for his wraith's retro thrusters. The engines scream to full power, and his ship blasts forward, straight towards Yaris. The Una's leader, caught off guard, reflexively triggers his weapons. Every cannon and missile port on his fighter erupts at once, hurling a wall of certain death at Burns. But in that same instant, Burns reaches out and cuts all power to his shields. He diverts every scrap of energy to his engines, overloading them far past the red line. Yaris's full salvo slams into the wraith's unprotected hull. The rounds and energy blasts tear through the ship's skin, shredding armor and vital systems. But Burns is moving too fast. The munitions fail to hit anything immediately critical, as he rides a surge of acceleration and G-forces that would pulp an unaugmented man. He flies his critically damaged fighter straight down the Una's leader's throat, ramming Yaris's ship nose to nose at maximum speed. The impact is cataclysmic. Both ships crumple like tin foil, disappearing in a massive explosion that momentarily outshines the system's star. A sphere of plasma and molten debris expands from the collision point, 
wreckage tumbling in all directions. Jagged chunks of Burns' Wraith and Yaris's fighter pelt the Una's flagship's hull, leaving smoking craters in the thick armor. Then, as suddenly as it began, it's over. A stunned silence falls over the battlefield as the fireball dissipates, leaving only a spreading cloud of cooling vapor and glittering fragments where the two combatants met their end. There's no doubt about it. No one could have survived that collision. The War Master is dead. A stunned silence gripped the Una's fleet as the fireball of Yaris's death faded. For a moment, nothing moved. No shots fired, no fighters launched, just a yawning void where their leader had been. Then a single crackling voice broke the spell. This is Commander Keith Burns to any UNSF forces in range. Burns slumped in his cockpit, every word an effort. Pain lanced through his body as he spoke. I have neutralized the enemy commander, but my ship is critically damaged, requesting immediate extraction over. Static hissed across the channel, stretching for an eternity. Burns felt his vision starting to gray at the edges. Just as unconsciousness threatened to claim him, a voice responded crisply. Commander Burns, this is the USS Retribution. We read you and are en route to your position. ETA two minutes. Hold on, we're coming to get you. A strangled laugh bubbled up from Burns's throat, turning into a wince as agony ripped through his abdomen. Glancing down, he saw a wickedly jagged shard of metal protruding from his flight suit, shrapnel from the collision, blood welled around it, seeping through the fabric. Gritting his teeth until his jaw creaked, Burns reached down and gripped the metal. He couldn't suppress the scream that tore from his lips as he ripped it free. The cockpit swam before his eyes. Blinking hard, he fumbled at his suit, tearing a strip of fabric free. He bound it tightly around the gushing wound, feeling it dampen immediately. Her shrill beeping from his sensor board snapped him back to full alertness. A dozen new contacts, Una's fighters, diving straight towards his crippled ship. Leaderless, the alien pilots had defaulted to base instinct, seek and destroy. And Burns was the only target in sight. His eyes flicked over his instruments, a grim mental checklist. Weapons offline, engines barely responding. Shields. He barked a bleak laugh. What shields? He was a sitting duck. A single plasma bolt would finish him. But like hell was he going to just sit here and die? Not after everything. Sucking a breath through his teeth, Burns wrenched his control stick hard to port. The wraith groaned and shuddered, reluctantly rolling. G-forces tore at Burns as he forced the damaged ship through a lurching corkscrew. The Una's fighters flashed past, their shots stitching wildly through the space he'd just vacated. Snarling, they wheeled around for another pass. Burns' hands danced across the controls, coaxing every last drop of maneuverability from his dying ship. The wraith bucked and juddered, alarm screaming from every panel as he hurled it through rolls and twists that would tear a ship apart. Plasma bolts and cannon rounds sliced the void around him, near misses scorching his hull. The Unas swarmed him like frenzied sharks that had scented blood in the water. It was a losing battle, and Burns knew it. There were too many, and his ship was too far gone. But every second he held out was a second longer for the retribution to reach him. Commander Burns, we have you on sensors. We're launching fighters to assist. Just hold on a little longer. The voice crackled over his comm, tight with tension but controlled. Burns huffed a strained laugh, blinking sweat and blood from his eyes. Much obliged, Retribution, but I don't know how much longer I can... A plasma bolt impacted directly on his nose, vaporizing armor and vital systems. The concussion hurled Burns forward into his harness, the straps digging into his shoulders. His head slammed into the console, pain exploding through his skull. Gasping, he raised his head. His vision swam, instruments nothing more than blurred, meaningless lights. The wraith was an inert lump of metal around him, dead in space. The Una's fighters swept towards him, eager for the kill. The Una's fighters bore down on Burns' crippled ship, plasma cannons glowing as they prepared to deliver the killing blow. In the heartbeat before they fired, a barrage of missiles streaked past Burns' canopy, so close he could feel the heat of their exhaust through the cockpit glass. The warhead slammed into the Una's ships, consuming them in blossoms of fire and debris. 
Burns craned his neck, ignoring the stab of pain from his wounds, and looked up to see a full squadron of UNSF wraith fighters screaming into the battle. Their lasers and railguns blazed, tearing into the remaining Una ships with ruthless precision. And there, at the tip of the formation, was a wraith Burns recognized instantly, the personal ship of Admiral Holloway himself. The Admiral's voice crackled over the comm, warm and steady despite the chaos of the dogfight raging around them. Looks like you could use a hand, Commander. Sorry we're late to the party. Burns barked a weak laugh, relief flooding through his veins like a drug. No worries, Admiral, you're right on time. With the UNSF reinforcements swarming the battlefield, the tide turned with astonishing speed. The human pilots flew circles around the remaining Una's ships, their superior training and cutting-edge craft making them seem almost untouchable. They wove through the alien formations like a pack of wolves culling a herd, systematically cutting the enemy vessels to shreds. From the cockpit of his ruined wraith, Burns watched the one-sided slaughter unfold. Una ships died by the dozen, vanishing in short-lived stars as the human pilots' missiles and guns found their marks. The void lit up with explosion after explosion until it seemed as if he were watching some grand and terrible fireworks display. In a matter of minutes, the once mighty Una's fleet was reduced to a drifting graveyard. Blackened hulks, fading embers, and the frozen corpses of alien pilots forever tumbling through the silence of space. As the last enemy ship shattered under a volley of railgun rounds, a cheer went up over the UNSF comnet, a hundred human voices raised in triumph and relief. Admiral Holloway's voice cut through the celebration, calm and commanding. All units secure from battle stations. Let's bring our boy home. Some interminable time later, Burns found himself lying in a bed in the Retribution's medical bay. The pain in his abdomen dulled to a low throb by the cocktail of drugs the doctors had pumped into him. Admiral Holloway stood at his bedside, his craggy face split by a proud smile. You did it, Commander, he said, voice brimming with undisguised admiration. You saved millions of lives today. The Unas won't be a threat to anyone ever again thanks to you. Burns shook his head weakly exhaustion settling over him like a leaden blanket. Thank you, sir, but it wasn't just me out there. Every pilot, every crewman, we all did our part. Holloway reached out and patted Burns's shoulder, the gesture at once fatherly and respectful. That's true, Commander, but it was your courage, your skill that made the difference. You're a hero, Burns, and I'll make sure the whole galaxy knows it. The Admiral turned to leave, but Burns called out after him, one last question nagging at the back of his thoughts. Sir, what about the rest of the Unas, their colonies, their worlds? What happens now? Holloway paused at the door, his brow furrowing in thoughtful consideration. That's a good question, Commander, and it's one we'll have to answer carefully. But one thing I know for sure, with men like you defending us, the human race will be ready for whatever comes next. With that... The Admiral strode from the room, leaving Burns alone with his thoughts and the soft beeping of the medical equipment. He stared up at the ceiling, his mind a whirl. The battle was over, but he knew this was only the beginning. The Unus had been defeated here, but there would be other threats out there among the stars, other enemies waiting to test humanity's resolve. But in that moment, as the exhaustion finally dragged him down into the waiting embrace of sleep, Burns felt something he hadn't in a long, long time. Hope. Burns stood on the bridge of the retribution, hands clasped behind his back as he stared out at the infinite expanse of stars. Weeks had passed since his climactic duel with Warmaster Yaris, weeks spent recovering from his injuries and coming to terms with all that had happened. The scars on his body had healed, but the ones on his soul still ached. The galaxy was in a state of shock struggling to adjust to the new reality left in the wake of the Unus War. The UNSF had been working around the clock, desperately trying to shore up the fragile peace that had emerged from the ashes of the conflict. Suddenly alarms blared throughout the bridge, red lights pulsing urgently. Burns spun to face the sensor officer, his heart already starting to pound. Report! The young officer scanned his display, his face draining of colour. He looked up at Burns, eyes wide with disbelief and fear. Sir, it's the Unas. They're back. Burns felt a chill race down his spine, 
a cold knot forming in his gut. What do you mean they're back? We destroyed their fleet, their leadership. The officer shook his head, swallowing hard. It's not just a fleet, sir. It's, it's an armada, thousands of ships, maybe more, and they're heading straight for Earth. Burns braced himself against a console, feeling suddenly light-headed. He'd thought he had ended the Una's threat, that his sacrifices and those of his fallen comrades had bought humanity a reprieve, but it seemed he had only delayed the inevitable. Admiral Holloway strode onto the bridge, his face grim. Burns turned to him, a desperate plan already forming in his mind. Sir, we have to evacuate Earth, get as many people to safety as we can. Burns took a deep breath, knowing what he had to do, what he had always done, put himself between his people and those who would destroy them. I'll lead the defence, sir. I'll buy you as much time as I can. Holloway looked at him, pride and sadness warring in his eyes. He reached out and gripped Burns' shoulder, his voice rough with emotion. I know you will, Commander. Godspeed. A short time later, Burns was back in the cockpit of his wraith, leading a squadron of UNSF fighters towards the oncoming Una's armada. The enemy ships filled his viewscreen, a seemingly endless sea of metal and weaponry. The odds were stacked against the humans even more than before. The Una's had learned from their defeat, adapting their tactics and technology. As the two fleets entered weapons range, the void of space erupted with light and fire. Plasma bolts, missiles and beams of searing energy crisscrossed the gap between the armadas, impacting on shields and hulls with cataclysmic force. Ships on both sides were torn apart, spilling debris and bodies into the merciless vacuum. Burns threw his wraith into the maelstrom, his guns and missiles lashing out at every enemy target that crossed his sights. He wove through the chaos with preternatural skill, his augmented reflexes guiding him through the infinitesimal gaps between certain death. But it wasn't enough. For every Una's ship he destroyed, a dozen more seemed to take its place, and one by one Burns's wingmen fell, consumed by the firestorm until only he remained, a lone human fighter amidst a swarm of alien predators. Plasma bolts stitched the space around him, slamming into his shields and sending alarms blaring through his cockpit. Burns gritted his teeth, pouring every ounce of power he had into his weapons and engines. If this was to be his end, he would make it one worthy of remembrance. With a defiant roar, Burns plunged headlong into the heart of the Una's armada, guns blazing and missiles leaping from their racks. He carved a path of destruction through the alien ships, leaving a trail of shattered hulks and expanding fireballs in his wake. But there were too many, their weapons too powerful. Burns' shields fell, his armor cracked and split, consoles exploded around him, showering him with sparks and shards of metal. Still, he fought on, raging against the dying of the light. Until at last, a plasma bolt found its mark. It pierced his cockpit, vaporizing everything in its path. In an instant, Commander Keith Burns and his wraith disintegrated, vanishing in a blaze of pure white light. On the bridge of the Retribution, Admiral Holloway watched as Burns's signal winked out on the display. A single tear tracked down his weathered cheek as he turned to face his crew, his voice heavy with grief and resolve. All hands, prepare for warp jump. We're getting our people to safety. As the Retribution and the remaining human ships fled the lost battle, jumping away to the prearranged rally point, Holloway couldn't help but wonder if this was the beginning of the end. If humanity's time as a spacefaring species was drawing to a close. The Unas had been beaten back for now, but they would return stronger and more determined than ever. And without heroes like Burns to stand against them, what hope did mankind have? Amidst the debris field that had once been a battlefield, a single object tumbled end over end, glinting in the distant light of cold stars. It was a helmet, cracked and charred, the name Burns, still barely visible, etched into its side. A piece of a legend, now forever consigned to the void. A final reminder of the man who had given his life for his people, and the uncertain destiny that awaited them among the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, 
please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.